Mary Mead and welcome. Welcome to the realms of mysticism, the occult, and magic, where your possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Welcome to the Witch's Cauldron and discover the knowledge you seek. Gather round the cauldron and even stay for a spell. Brightest blessings to you. Merry meet and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. Today's video is one that I've been kind of kicking around for a while. And that is 10 things that I think every baby witch should know. Now, I'm going to put this in there, out there. I do personally do not like the term baby witch. This is a personal thing for me. And let me explain why. I realize that, you know, baby witch kind of comes out of the baby goth movement. Same kind of thought process a lot of people give it. However, to me, a more appropriate term would be to call yourself an initiate, a dedicant, a novice, a student of the craft, whatever, you know. But my personal is, I hate the term baby witch. Because I think it almost denotes it to making witchcraft and witchery infantile. And that's not what it is, okay? So, my first rule that every baby witch should know, as much as it kills me to keep using that term, I'm going to keep using it, is learn as much as you can. It's an ever-evolving process. If you quit learning you will never, ever, ever succeed. And that goes to say with everything, even at my age, crone phase of my life, closer to 60 than I am to 50, and I still learn something new every day. I practice something every day. So keep that in mind. It's an your path and how you walk it is an ever changing and evolving journey. So don't ever stop learning. Number two, reading a book or a post on the internet site and wearing spoopy clothing do not make you a witch or a Wiccan. I very rarely wear spoopy clothing, but I'm a real damn witch. If you're only in it for the aesthetic, you're not going to be a very successful witch. If you approach it with the honor that it deserves, then you can be a, you will be a real witch. But if you just like to wear black and that's the only thing because you think being a witch might be cool, um, your motivation's probably misplaced. And if that is your motivation, go ahead, look like a witch. It's not going to make you one. Number three, master the basics before you attempt anything advanced in witchery. You need to learn the history of paganism, of Wicca, of witchcraft. And I don't mean history according to Hollywood. I mean actually researching like a scholarly work to really delve in to the history of witchcraft, 
Wicca, and paganism. Another thing is to research and understand the significance of the wheel of the year, okay? Or in other pathways, the solstices, the equinoxes, and what they meant to ancient civilizations. It was all tied to understanding where your food comes from and your crops and how they were able to provide for their families, for their communities. You also need to be an adept at connecting with nature and the energy of nature. Becoming an adept with energy work and focusing, staying grounded and centered, being able to raise a cone of power through multiple different ways of raising energy, like visualization, chanting, dancing, drumming, sex. All are equally powerful ways of raising energy. You have to be an adept at being able to focus the intent, raise that energy, and release the energy. Another thing you need to master is protection. How do you set up wards? How do you create talismans and amulets? Working with herbs and crystals and plants and trees and gemstones and oils to find the ones that you bond with. I have a lot of kind of what I call exotic herbs, you know, like the wolfsbane and mandrake and mistletoe and belladonna and otherwise known as deadly nightshade and foxglove and some of the herbs that are, you know, the baneful herbs, so to speak, that people have put a, a little label on. But I have my core 13 gemstones, my core 13 herbs that are ones that I bonded with that have the most punch for me that cover almost every intent that I could think of. But I have such a strong bond with them that that just increases my power even more because I do have that bond. And then finally, a part of mastering the basics is to find the kind of witchery that you really connect with and you find stimulating, whether you're a kitchen witch, a hedge witch, gray, white, green, black, blah, 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 whether you, you know, walk the left-hand path, whether you become a Satanist, anything you have to find what you bond with and what speaks to you, okay? Don't be, number four, do not be afraid of other magical paths. And I just mentioned a couple, like the left-hand path, like Satanism, like theistic Satanism, trad witchery, hereditary witchery, heathenry, druidry, Witta, which is like Irish witchcraft, granny magic, southern conjure, voodoo, hoodoo, powwow, strega, which is Italian. Your path is no more correct or righteous than anyone else's, okay? It's your path. The more you understand about other paths, you understand the concepts of magic and manifestation, those paths have a lot more in common than you initially think. And at the end of the day, we are all brothers and sisters walking a magical occult path. When we stop throwing stones at other 
ways of doing things in other paths then the more powerful you actually become number five and especially you wiccans look into mama paula's eyes look into the grandma's eyes here do not be afraid to learn the baneful spells as you become more adept. And I like to put it this way. To protect from them, you have to be equally adept at slinging them back to where they came from. A curse, a hex, crossing, blah, you know, be, 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 all those baneful little things. To heal, you have to know how to hurt. To reverse, you have to know how to throw the curse. Remember that. And just because you learn it doesn't change what's in your heart. But how can you, you know, protect yourself and put up your wards and protections, okay, if you don't know what goes in to hexing, cursing, and the other baneful arts, okay? So just because you learn about them doesn't make you any less of a Wiccan, okay? Look at Grandma, okay? Number six, document, 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 and document some more. Be sure to keep journals about your experiences. Be sure to record the successes and the failures of your spells and, and rituals and learn from them. I didn't, I didn't learn as much from my successful, successful spells as I did from the ones that blew up on me, okay? Your book of shadows, your journals, your grimoires are a documentation of your path. It's not a craft project. I'm going to throw this one of my pet peeves. It is not a craft project to have a bunch of plastic shit hanging out of your book of shadows. If you want to decorate your book of shadows, do it with natural materials, okay? Press your own flowers. Draw your, something yourself. Um, instead of using, you know, plastic, whatever the hex, make it yourself. Find something in a wooden that's made of wood, some kind of natural material. And don't litter your book of shadows or your grimoire with a bunch of plastic crap from the Dollar Tree. Please, please don't do that. And it's completely appropriate, and I've done this in mine, to put a, a little plastic Ziploc bag of an herb to show what the dried form looks like, as well as including a picture that I found you know, of it growing in the wild, either that I've taken myself or I found a picture on the internet to include what it looks like growing in the wild and be sure to put where you can find it. Like one of my favorite herbs to work with is mulein and you find it in the ditches along the side of the road in the United States, okay? And most people have seen it and drive by it and they don't ever have a clue what it really is. They just think it's a big old weed. So remember that. Number seven, don't be lazy. You have to do, actually do things to learn. It takes a lot of practice. Work, actually work. Feel the energy with those crystals and herbs and the notice and keep a journal, keep a, a lunar journal um, to document the moon phases, what sign it's in, how you were feeling that day. Did it have an effect on your health? 
do certain, you can then learn a lot about yourself by discovering how the moon affects you, how certain planetary alignments affect you, things like that. And research from more than one source. Don't just listen to me. I'm just some on the internet, you know? Because an author or creator is popular doesn't mean that they are a legitimate practitioner. There are some really big channels that I can think of who talk the talk, but you can tell they do not walk the walk, okay? Number eight, you don't need a lot of stuff, okay? And I fell into this, path, into this trap when I first started down this path. You want to buy everything. You want it all. You want it now. Blah, blah, blah. Don't buy a sampler pack of 200 different herbs in little itty bitty little plastic bags. You're not going to use 95% of the sh they sell you. You're just not. Learn to use what's around you. Learn what's in your neighborhood. Learn what's out your back door. If you're in a city, learn what, you know, supermarket herbs you can buy and have easy access to that have a long list of correspondences to go with it. Things that you make yourself are way more powerful than the stuff that you buy and then consecrate. Even if you're buying from another magical practitioner, if you take the time to craft something yourself, you're putting your energy in that item, and that makes it even more powerful. And when you do buy things, buy ethically sourced products, and buy from pagan-owned businesses if you can. Buyer breed, beware. If, you, if your primary source is eBay or Amazon for your magical supplies, a lot of the gemstones and crystals that you buy, these big sample packs, and, oh, here's some in little tiny cute little witch bottles and this and that, or a whole apothecary. A lot of times those gemstones are lab-created, they're color has been altered. It's not the gemstone that it says it is. And once you become adept with the energies, then you know the difference between the real deal and something that's been made out of resin or epoxy or plastic and colored or something that has been irradiated to change color so that it looks like something else. So buyer beware, okay? Number nine, there is nothing more dangerous than an ignorant magical practitioner. And what I mean by that is someone who is without knowledge, okay? If you don't learn the things that I have talked about up until this point, you will burn yourself out, you can drain your energy, you leave yourself open to attachments, and you create what I call malignant magic, okay? You can unintentionally bind an elemental to your property if you don't learn to properly call and release, okay? So beware of that. Ignorance is not bliss, in this case. Number 10, follow your intuition and your instincts. It won't let you down. I don't know what anyone's particular circumstances are. I don't know their background. I don't know their ancestry, their lineage, their tie, their this, their that, their something else. So who am I to judge and tell somebody they're on the wrong path? That's not, I can tell you when I find what I call a plastic shaman. I can tell you when I find people that I can tell 
have not actually walked the walk, that they're doing a lot of aesthetic stuff and very little with regard to actually being a magical practitioner. So follow your instinct and your intuition as to your own path, who you listen to, who you choose as a mentor or somebody to look up to, your, the authors that you follow, the books that you read, the tarot decks that call to you. It's whatever you bond with. Your instincts will not let you down. And don't let other people tell you um, that you have no right to think or feel the way that you do about a certain thing, okay, or certain practice. Some people bond more with gemstones than they do with herbs. Some people, the other way around, some people bond more with, you know, oils and some people really bond with kitchen witchery. Some people can't boil water. So it's all about finding what speaks to you. And I can, I can throw the bullshit flag up on people that I know um, who are teaching dangerous things and, and things of that nature. So just if you think something smells like it's probably okay. With that, those are my 10 things that every baby witch should know. And again, I hate saying baby witch. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just an old fart. Sue me. <laughs> With that, my friends, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, and you're a baby witch, leave me a comment down below. What spoke to you the most? in this video about the 10 things that I think every baby witch should know. So with that, I, as I always say, Mary, we did meet. Mary, we will part until we marry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye.